Hi guys, my name is Shidim Machike James and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time of coming on here, you're absolutely welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Please watch this video to the end. Do well to hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and leave a nice comment down below. Alright, so I'll just move straight into this video. There's no need to be going back and forth. Alright, so this in this video I'll be sharing, if you don't know, um, or if you are new in this channel, I lost my mother in 2020, yeah, 2020, that was last year, September. We all know that the loss of a, a loved one is so painful, it hurts so bad, and there is nothing really that you can say to somebody who is grieving to compensate. If the Holy Spirit does not comfort you himself, there is nothing anybody says that will make you feel comforted, that will make you feel all right. All right, so and is is one thing to lose a loved one, but it's another thing to lose a mother. I mean, you can't compare. The loss of a mother is so painful that I won't even wish it on my worst enemy. I know what I went through those times. I know what I had to go through. It was so painful. And considering the fact that I was pregnant, I was heavily pregnant. I was, I think, I was about eight months gone when I lost my mother. It was just I can't explain it. I can't put it in words, but just know that it's a very painful thing so overcoming it was not easy or going through that phase it was so tough but through some of the points i'm about to share now i was able to go through it i'm still in the healing process even though i've made lots of progress it doesn't hurt like it used to and i didn't put my life on a hold because i lost my mom even though it was so painful so i'm about to share with us the few uh, things that i had to apply in my life to make it like that I survived. I don't know my survival tips. Let me just call it survival tips. The few things that I did that helped me to survive that phase. So the first thing that I did was to accept it. I hadn't seen my mom all through the while she was sick. So I saw her a Christmas before. She was fine. Strong. She's not somebody that is old. Like, like she hardly gets sick. All through. I don't have any memory. Like I've never, she has never been admitted in the hospital my whole life. Apart from, I'm the last child, all right? So probably the admission she had was when she had my older older siblings. So for me, I've never seen her admitted in the hospital. I've never seen her sick. I've never seen her take injections. Just in her old age, I've seen her taking BP, excuse me, BP tablets. And that would be just every morning was like a routine. So she was never sick. Even most times her BP would be stable, like for a very long time. And she wouldn't even have to take any medication. So the medication was something she would take once in a while. And she's a strong woman. So her dying, like she just started complaining of tummy ache, that she was feeling pain here and there. And a few months later, she was gone. So to me, it was a shock. I found it so hard to believe it because then we were, it was during the lockdown period. I was back in my base, then I was in New York and she was in Port Harcourt with my sister. So she was complaining of tummy ache. It wasn't so serious. And then all of a sudden it became so serious, you know, from, it just went from zero to hundred like that. And she started losing strength, started losing strength and until she died. All right. So I wasn't able to go and see her, but we were talking on the phone every single day. We had to talk sometimes three times, sometimes four times, sometimes more. We were talking on the phone frequently and she would always summon courage and sound strong. So for me, I didn't know it was as bad as it was until she died. I have, I, I always felt like she, she, she has gone through, you know, worse things in terms of, not in terms of health wise, but she's a strong woman. She has been like, she has been in so much situation, in situations that you would think somebody would die, but she came out, you know, out of it. So I felt she's strong. She would overcome. This is one of those things. So I never saw her death coming. I never saw it coming. She would sound strong on the phone. I don't want to go like deep, deep, deep into explaining the circle situation. I just know that she was really sick, but I didn't know she was that sick, like that sick. All right. So I would call on the phone even when i would want to come she'd be like no 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 what are you coming for what for don't worry just stay back i wasn't able to go and see her and finally when i i, I tried to go and see her was when i started calling her i spoke with her a day before and she told me she was going to the hospital and then she started saying things like like don't be scared i'll be back uh, nobody should panic on my behalf i'm going to the hospital tomorrow i might be admitted uh, but just know that i'll be back okay i don't want anybody to be scared i don't want you to cry i don't want you to feel bad okay i'm like what is going on why are you talking this way and then she goes ahead to say my brother will be coming 
um, because my brother stays out of town, doesn't stay in the same town that she was at that time. She was in Port Harcourt, my brother was in a different town, Omaha. She started saying things like, my brother would come so that they would all go to hospital, that everybody, everything is fine, I should know what. So after that, after that call, I broke down. Like, I started crying, I'm like, okay, what is going on? Is it that bad? Why does my brother have to travel all the way for you to go to the hospital? Like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, at that point, I just said, no, I have to go and see her. That was the last time we spoke. So the next day, I started calling her. My sister kept on telling me she's sleeping. Uh, she's too tired to talk. Uh, she wants to rest. You know, I couldn't speak with her through the next day. The second day, the same thing. And then I was out of town. I went for a conference, like out of town, a little bit far from where I stay. So once, immediately I came back. I just packed up my things. I said, no, this is it. I'm going to see her. Like, so we traveled. I was heavily pregnant. I didn't care. My husband and I, we went to see her. She was already in the hospital. So I got to the hospital. And the next thing they are telling me is that she's in coma. Okay. It was like a shock. So I'm trying to digest that. So my sister said she's in coma. Do you want to see her? I couldn't even, I was still trying to like, it, it was a blow. That she's in coma alone was already a blow. I was trying to, to get myself together to be able to see her. So I told her, no, not yet. Let me just sit down a little bit and get myself. So I was just sitting down at the reception, just close to the room she was staying, but I didn't look into the room. I didn't go there because I, I couldn't bear to see my mom in that situation, to see her sick, to see her, you know, lying down there, helpless, in coma, for God's sake, my own mother. Like, I couldn't ask. Like, it was, I was just trying to, like, get myself. I just sat down. I was just trying to, to digest the coma news i was just sitting there and sister was like do you want to see her i'm like no no please not yet not yet then the next day the doctor comes out and she tells my sister excuse me i want to see you and then they move to her office okay i'm i'm still trying to understand what's happening like in my mind i'm <laughs> this is all a dream i'm sure this is a nollywood movie everything will soon i'll soon wake up and then my sister comes out with that look my sister couldn't even talk she was like it's fine you know you know that attitude of don't worry don't worry everything is fine at that point like she couldn't talk she she didn't want to she's not somebody that breaks bad news no matter how bad the situation is she likes to to paint it you know she likes to make it look rosy and so when she came out and she wasn't saying anything i knew there was i knew something was wrong so looking at her and seeing that look in her face i knew something was definitely wrong at that point i was already tears were already coming i just knew what it was she was like she's gone you know she's gone hey jesus my word like my whole world crashed before my eyes like my whole world crashed i thought i was going to die i couldn't see past to like i couldn't see tomorrow i couldn't see past even that hour not to talk of tomorrow like everything became dark and gloomy everything was just metallic everything was just blank like I couldn't i cried out my heart and you know i couldn't just bear they were you know after they broke the news they were like do you want to go and see her i'm like no i can't do this you know i can't see my mother in that i was pregnant for god's sake so i don't want anything that will torment me you know like if seeing her will hurt me the picture will never leave my memory i know because i saw my dad when he was in coma before he passed on and today i have that picture like that picture is so clear in my mind like it just happened yesterday so i know i battled with that for so many years and i do want to see my mother like that so me not going to see her when she was in coma was intentional and at that point too when she, they, had, they said she was gone i also make a decision look i'm not going to go and see her um she's gone is that she's gone somehow i managed to tell myself that i now i have to protect this baby i don't want to be shattered like i don't want to be to be in shambles i need to get myself together because i still have to enter labor room and i still have to push out this child i don't want anything that will destroy me or just or just you know or kill me or anything like that you know so after crying you know they started making arrangements to bring out her her body from her bed and they are looking for stretchers and all i said you know what i just told myself i can't i can't deal i can't stand this i can't i can't be looking at all this is going on this is not my mother like I, this cannot be my mother it's not happening to me you know so i just summoned courage i'm like you know i'm in the car i'll be waiting at the car i don't want to see any of this i don't want to see any of this i can't bear it i can't bear anybody dragging my mother's body lifeless i, I can't i cannot you know i just stood up I went to the car and I was just in the car. At that point, I was no longer crying. I couldn't cry. 
I was emotionless. Like I was feeling nothing. I was seeing nothing. I was smelling nothing. Oh God. It's a horrible place to be. I need to give a background story so that I can connect. Okay, so um, I was in the car until they brought a mo uh, an ambulance. They took her away. And I was just there, sitting there, thinking of what I'm about to do with my life. I couldn't believe that my mother was gone. Like, for some days, the truth is that everything was dark and gloomy. I couldn't see past that week. I didn't even know I survived that week. Oh, and when I survived the week, I'm like, oh, really, I'm still here. That night, of course, the night she died, I couldn't sleep. The next night, I couldn't sleep. So many days, I was, I was sleepless. And then, I couldn't see. Everything was... You know dark and gloomy i could i lost interest in life i lost interest in in everything you know but at some point about two weeks into that i'm like you need to get yourself together <laughs> you need to get yourself you have your children to look out for you're pregnant you need to like get yourself together it has happened is that it has happened you need to look on the bright side and get yourself together so the, i'm about to share to you guys the tips that i used to you know get going or pass through that phase of my life so the number one is acceptance i spoke to myself and i told myself your mother is gone she is d-e-a-d -E you won't see her again get that into your head let it enter like no matter how much you cry no matter how much you wish she's here you are never going to see her again so first thing accept that second thing be grateful for the life you had with her because a lot of people we are not privileged enough to have their mother up to even see their children all right so you enjoyed her in your childhood you enjoyed her as a teenager you enjoyed her to an extent as a as an adult and she even got to see your children so first of all be thankful so the first thing i did was i had to talk to myself to accept it look hey you are not the first a lot of people have lost their mother people will still lose their mother and were you expecting her to live forever like people come and they go you know, I had to talk to myself and I told myself like she's 72. I thank God she wasn't even able to make it to that age. I accepted that mommy is gone. You know, so I deleted her number from my phone. I deleted most of her pictures from my phone because I didn't want something that would be bringing her memory. Like the, her memory was, every time I remember her for whatever reason, I would just shut down. All right, so I needed to accept that she has gone and just move on. Like, and for that moment, I didn't want things here and there reminding me of her. So I deleted her, my, her pictures from my phone and I deleted her, all my, our text message conversations. I deleted them. I deleted her number just so it could help me. Did it really help? Mm, yeah, somehow. But once in a while, I would remember her, you know, and because I'm human. All right, but there was this voice note conversation I had with her. I just saved that one. I didn't want to let it go. It was, I don't know, that one used to help me when I'm down for some reasons. So I kept it. So, so the second thing I did was talking to myself and telling myself, look, it's not that bad. I had to see the bright side of the picture. I'm like, okay, she's not here physically, but I'm sure she's in heaven. Because even while she's born again, my mom has is born again. She was really much involved in her church, her local assembly even beyond her local assembly before her passing her passing on so um, i know she's in heaven all right and even to be to be double checked because why before she slipped into coma when like we had still having the signal in the realm of the spirit my sisters led her to christ again she just repeated after them and soon after she repeated after them like gave her life to christ again or renewed her life to christ just in case there's anything anywhere she slipped into coma so she wasn't responsive soon after that prayer all right so I'm 100% sure of where she is. So I told myself, like, why are you crying? We are just, this is just, yeah, in the realm of the physical, she's not here, but she's in a better place. I guess, where I'm sure wherever she is now, even if you tell her, please, can you come back to her? She's going to be like, no, I'm done with that place. All right, I'm sure. All right, so anything that I'm seeing making me cry, feeling like I should have done more for her while she was alive, or just blaming myself for things that I'm not even guilty of, it's just me guilt tripping myself, and it's just the devil trying to torment me. So I'm sure she's in a better place. She's in heaven. There's no place better than heaven. Heaven is better than earth. The other thing I did was prayers. I prayed a lot that time. God was really my strength because I didn't have any. There was nothing anybody was telling me. If, the more you tell me sorry, like I, in, in my mind, I'm getting upset. I'm like, it's easy for you to say sorry because you are not in my shoes. 
it's easy for you to say oh 72 she tried because some people are so insensitive you can't believe i told my mom somebody somebody found out that my i lost my mom and then she asked me what's her age i said 72 she was like hmm, please go and sit down uh, your mother your, allow the old man to go and sleep i'm like really is this what this person has to say if, of course i smiled through it and acted like it was nothing but that is so insensitive prayer kept me going prayer kept me going so each time i would want to um each time i would feel like straying away in my thoughts or getting emotional i would just start praying i'll just start praying in the holy ghost i'm like holy spirit help me return color to life to me like at the moment she died you felt like like if you're standing under a tree when you look down you would see the shadows even without seeing the tree like if somebody closes your eyes and brings you under a tree and opens your eyes you would see shadows you would know you're under a tree even without seeing the tree right so the moment she died i literally felt like a branch of view was caught above me and i was exposed to the sun so it was i can't explain the, explain the feeling maybe if, if you've been in my situation and you can relate with what i'm saying please drop a comment down below let's understand each other here okay so i was feeling like a tree was cut over me and i was exposed to the sun that was exactly how i felt anytime i feel that way what i do is i just start playing the holy ghost i almost became very aggressive because i was just finding reasons to attack any antagonize people around me like i if anything in my mind i'm like okay because you have not lost your mother that's why okay because my mother is not here that's why like the devil wanted to get me to that point where i would be blaming people for their actions and saying okay it's because my mom is not here that's why you're treating me like this oh people can be wicked now my mom is not here and this is you know i almost got to that point but i had to retrace and tell myself look you are being overshadowed i don't know you are being too emotional now people will not change because your mother is dead everybody's still being themselves so don't see anybody like you're not beginning to treat me this way because my mother is not here or that it's just the devil trying to mess you up trying to mess up with your emotions all right so when i want to get like that i would withdraw repent and then just do more of prayer so prayer helped me a lot and each time i finished praying i would literally feel like a weight was lifted off my shoulder i'll feel lighter i'll feel happy i would see you know color again and if at all in the course of the days coming or weeks i'm, I'm beginning to feel like that i just engage in prayer again so i just was just praying all the time right just to get myself back so i was just praying all the time just to keep saying now the third thing that really helped me and this is the most important for me is i relied i was relying on the holy spirit i said holy spirit is just me and you i don't have any other person holy spirit was my strength he was my backbone even till now he is still the reason why I, i'm able to laugh through crack jokes just be me just be okay it's just the holy spirit because he keeps telling me over and over again and i can hear it i'm with you you're not alone your mother is in a better place face your life and you know she left a very big shoes for you to feel she lived a good life and she's gone so you just try to feel her shoes and if possible be better or i do better it was as if i really found favor with the holy spirit after the death of my mom because things that i would usually struggle with or pray 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 before it happens it was like it was just happening like this it was just him telling me you see your mom is gone but i'm here all right so things i would just i would just pray about things and they get answered i would just ask god for something and he just gives me and i think it was just his own way of saying you know you know when something when a child is hot or when a child is sick as a mother you want to like you know do buy things for the child things you would normally say no you don't need this and the child is like i need this you just give it to the child so that the child will feel all right i felt that was how god was treating me at that time that was how the holy spirit was treating me at that time he was everywhere with me he was everywhere with me he was my strong consolation my strongest consolation so nothing anybody told me made me feel all right nothing anybody said was able to console me the thing that was able to console me was the holy spirit strongly on my side all right so i was constantly reading on god's word the devil came to torment me he came with a lot of lies to tell me a lot of things that are lies you know he he, he came and so many things so many negative things i don't even want to start saying in this video he came and then started saying a lot of things to me but the holy spirit helped me through god's word anytime i open the word of god god would give me a strong word that convinces me that he is still here with me anytime i open my the bible to read god will give me another word that tells me he's still he's still here like i'm not going anywhere i'm with you for life so you don't have to be afraid you don't have to be afraid i'm your mother now and i'm your father so right now god is my father and God is my mother. And anything I ask for, like I'm not even saying this because I'm making a video. This is my reality. 
Anything I ask God for, he gives me. Anything, except I have not opened my mouth to ask it. Anything I pray about, I get it. And it doesn't even take time. Like, I don't even stress about it. And this happened very often, immediately. Like, immediately my mom died. It happened really, you know, often. Like, I felt like, okay, Lord, this love, this love, this love is just too much, all right? I really felt, I, I literally felt that way. Like a, a child that is being pampered by the father or by the mother. I felt that way. God was just so amazing. His love kept me. His love kept me going. There's nothing else. Like, I don't know how to put it in words, but I know you understand what I'm saying. So the final thing, I guess the fifth thing, is that I surrounded myself with family and friends and, you know, loved ones, all right? So it's important that you, if you're grieving, Instead of staying with staying uh, in a place where people would remind you of how bad you're supposed to feel, or just people would just trigger that thing and then you start feeling bad, surround yourself with people that are conscious that this person is grieving, grieving, and needs all the love and the attention. All right. So I was I thank God for my husband. He was really amazing. He really understood. For my children, they were there. Just being around them, you know. It was just life. Like, that was the only thing that made sense to me after my mom was gone. It was just my family that made sense to me. Every other thing was just, you know, I don't even know, floating in my head. I couldn't even, I couldn't figure out anything. The only thing that made sense to me initially was my husband, my children, and my siblings. All right, so I was calling them often. We were even, if for anything, my mother's death, like, brought us closer we would talk every day, like we are talking like we are there for each other. Anybody needed anything, like we would just supply the person's need immediately. We are just there for each other and we are still there for each other. So her death was like a glue and it brought us, we were, we've always been, I come from a family amongst my siblings where we have always been united. We don't have stripes or, you know, all these sibling rivals, right? From growing up, we don't, I don't know, I don't know what that feels like. But the death of my mother even, you know, glued us more. It glued us more and you know the love right now amongst us is just so beautiful you know so surround yourself with family surround yourself with loved ones try as much as possible not to isolate yourself because you want to figure out yourself you know when the devil wants to destroy somebody the first thing he does is he isolates you you now go and start saying on your own and say you're thinking of this and thinking of that before you know it is slip into depression it was painful i will not deny that fact it was painful it was tough at some point but with the help of the holy spirit i saved through and i'm saying I mean, i'm still sailing through i do i still miss my mom of course I see Miss Hatsu today, but like it's not like it's weighing me down or anything. I I see some things and then it reminds me of my mom. I'm like, oh, if my mom was here, I miss her. Yes, I do. But Holy Spirit is here with me, so I have nothing to worry about. All right. So guys, this video is too too long right now. I don't know if I'll be posting this as one video. I'll divide it into two. But whichever way, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. Please, if you are not subscribed yet to this channel, take out a moment and click on the subscribe button and become part of this family. I love you guys. See some other time. Bye.